Okay, I'd like to call to order the special meeting of the Frankfurt Plant Board of Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. Uh, this is a special meeting uh, conducted in accordance with the governor's executive order that's limited to 10 people and we'll be recording it and it'll be available for people to view by audio and online. So with that, um, uh, Ms. Poe, if you would call the, call the uh, roll. Member Hale. Here. Member Eva. Here. 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 We have a we have a quorum, so we're constituted to do business. Uh, next item is approval of minutes of the June fifth, twenty twenty special board meeting. Uh, everybody should have a copy and have had a chance to look at them. Uh, do I have any questions, changes, or not, or do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the last special meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have a second? Uh, John Snyder seconded. Uh, any discussion? Any objection? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are adopted. Next item, number three, is accepting financials for the month ending May 31st, 2020. Mr. Denton? Yes, Mr. Cuban, members of the board. Uh, I'd like to start on page 17 of our board packet. I'll be walking through the financial statements uh, for our statement of net position ending May 31st and for our um, financial income statements ending the 11 months ending May 31st, 2020. So on page 17, I'll just quickly go through, you can see where we are uh, through the, uh, as of May 31st, 2020 versus 2019. You can see there on line 65 that we have had an increase in $5.3 million in assets. That's up 2.9% from a year ago at just over $186.6 million. Uh, as I talk about uh, quite a bit is how heavily we are invested in property, plant, and equipment. Um, most of the funds that we receive from, from our customers go right back into the investment uh, infrastructure of the company. About 62% of our assets are property, plant, and equipment and of our accumulated depreciation. Some good news to report on liabilities year over year. Line 130, you can see our liabilities decreased $8.3 million. That's a decrease of 8.8%. .8%. That's a very good numbers. Assets up, liabilities down is great. It leads you to an increase in net position of 15.6% or $13.6 million increase for the year, bringing your total liabilities in that position, same as your assets, at $186.6 million. I'd be glad to answer any questions about where we sit on the balance sheet. If not, I'd like to briefly go over page 18, the cash and investment schedule. Dave, do you want to just highlight real quick um, the fact of why that we're, our position is better this year compared to last year? It's, I mean, it's primarily, it looks like it's an investment. It's, Cash and equivalents is down, uh, investments is up. So, so yes, on assets, um, something, I'll go ahead and talk about it now, but when we get to the income statement, you can see, you know, we had budgeted to have a increase in net contribution through the 11 months of 10.8 million. We uh, have had, uh, we have decrease in revenue, but our uh, decrease in expenses have outpaced that. So we are actually up $2.6 million on our increase in net position. So that automatically makes your balance sheet stronger. Uh, plus we have managed to pay down uh, Long-term debt, almost $4.3 million uh, so far this year. Uh, we also had a big decrease uh, in our uh, payables for wholesale power as we had a, a change in payment terms for a switch to a new power supply. And that uh, those three those things with the uh, pay down in debt uh, also helped add to the balance sheet strength. So it's financial performance and continuing to pay down uh, liabilities. Mm -hmm. Cash and investments. Total uh, restricted and unrestricted cash, looking at line 80, page 18, just over $18.2 million. And our restricted and unrestricted investments, primarily in certificate of deposit, uh, line 145 of just over $27.5 million for the period. Next page, page 19. This was uh, what I was mentioning. We've paid down, you can see from the uh, fourth column there, paid down just under $4.3 million uh, in long-term debt. Started the year out at just over 36.8. We are now at uh, 32.5 million. And something that I think is really good as we talk about uh, in approving the budget for next year, in the next five years, we've got a, we're on a track to reduce our long-term debt by 43%, which is really good. That money we, we pay on annual debt service, that reduction we'll have in that will allow us to invest more in infrastructure without any affecting uh, changes in rates to our customers. I'd like to briefly talk about the financial performance through the first 11 months, looking on page 21, our statement of revenue expense and change in net position uh, through May 31st of this year. 
We've got current year, month, and year to date uh, against our prior year, month, and year to date. I'm going to focus on just our current year to date third column there. You can see we've had revenue of uh, 91.7 million on line 20. Uh, that's down 1.1 million from uh, our budget amounts, but that is all right as long as you're keeping costs in control, which we are. Uh, when you look at your total expenses through the first 11 months, uh, we're down just under uh, $5 million. About half of that decrease is a decrease in wholesale power. Uh, that brings our uh, line 365. You can see our increase in net contribution of 13.5 million. The bottom line there, which is up 2.6 million. So we've financially performed better than we thought. And that's something, again, to think about as we move into budget approval is if you perform better than you thought, you're starting off the next year better than you thought. So, so nothing but good things to report. Uh, through the first 11 months of the year, I'd be glad to answer any questions. How's our bed debt going? We're at just under 200,000 for the first 11 months and we had budgeted 200,000. So we're gonna probably go over a budget um, this year. We've historically been around $300,000 a year in bad debt. So historically, we're still below, below averages there. Right. Any questions for David, Steve, John, Don, Don? And so with the bad debt that also does that include people since the coronavirus that haven't paid? It has. So it's any customer who has had a closed account uh, for 90 days and has not paid their bill in full, we write off as bad debt. So that does include uh, customers. We're just right at the three-month mark, uh, and this is through May. So this is really not capturing most it, people that may have had bad debt due to COVID-19 is really not getting picked up in these numbers just yet. We have noticed... Um, we traditionally have had around 12 and a half to 13 percent of our customer base i should say dollar amount outstanding rolling a balance month to month as far as late pay we saw that jump from uh, march to april about uh, around three or four percent increase and we've seen it come back down the peak was in april so we saw a drop from april to may so i would love to i'd like to to say that the worst is behind us but we'll just we'll uh i'll save that for I hope I'm right on that, but uh, we're seeing a, a downward trend. People are paying their bills, and uh, we're glad for that. Of course, if anyone is having a hard time uh, for any reason, give us a call as soon as you can, and we'd be glad to work out a payment plan with you. Okay. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for David? With that, I need a motion to accept the financials. Okay. Steve made the motion. A second? Second. John seconded. Uh, any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Financials accepted. Thanks, David. Uh, next under four is the uh, informational items, department reports. First one up is telecommunications. Adam's coming through the door. So we had three outages for the month of uh, May. Um, as you can see there, um, one of them was an electric outage. Uh, the other two was equipment failure. Uh, trouble call for this month or last month, this time last year, we're down quite a bit. Uh, a lot of that might have to do with, we haven't been able to work all the trouble calls. Uh, we are starting to, you know, re-enter houses when the customers are, you know, okay with it and working on a lot of those so don't know what we'll have next month it might be higher than average um, the last page of the report is the customer penetrations for may we're looking pretty good uh, ending out the year so if there's any questions i'll be glad to answer them how are we doing in terms of we were experiencing an increase in requests for new service right are we still experiencing that or is it leveled off it's or? leveled off for the most okay. part yeah but we're still better. We've got more customers now than we did yes. several months ago. Yeah, and we haven't really seen the turn down as people re-enter work, so everything's mm -hmm. kind of holding, so it's good. Okay. Any questions for... Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next is uh, customer service. Yes, Mr. Cuban, I'll deliver the customer service report for May 2020, page 83. Uh, I was looking curious of how May 2020 looked compared to May 2019, a year ago. Uh, for, for this year, May 2020, we added 148 new accounts. Uh, that is down from 209 from a, from a year ago. Uh, 
calls answered, just under 4,600 phone calls answered. We were at 4,750 last year, so pretty much uh, very close to same. Our holding times, uh, due to uh, our suspension of service disconnections, you know, we were able to focus strongly, you know, it's phone calls, pretty much phone calls only, phones and email. Uh, you can see our tier one hold time is 24 seconds, tier three uh, hold time uh, is 56 seconds. So you call us, you're gonna get a human very quickly to answer your, and take care of your problem. Uh, cashier transactions, just over 44,000 uh, compared to 5,200 a year ago. But um, we've maintained in the last three months, have never closed our office, uh, have continued to keep the drive through open, which it is today. Um, we have uh, started this week our, we're calling it FPB curbside service. Um, we're encouraging customers to do business with us uh, without coming in the office if they can, just to keep them and also us safe as well. Mm -hmm. But if there's something that absolutely has to take place in the office, we can make accommodations for that. So uh, things are going about as good as they can. Mm -hmm. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Steve, John, What's the, what do you think the time frame is in terms of when I guess we'd go back to normal in terms of people walking in and so forth. If, until the governor lifts the suspension or the, the service disconnection mm -hmm. executive order, I don't see a reason why we would not continue to do business the way we are. Um, when we start uh, going back to service disconnections, we would no doubt have to have the lobby open right. uh, for all of the, the influx of payments and payment arrangements that happen during those two times of the month. But right now, customers are happy. Um, we're, you know, they are able to pay their bill as they as they can, and we're servicing their needs through the drive-through phone and internet. So, uh, we've had a really good response to, mm -hmm. to to how we've done business the last three months. Mm -hmm. um, Dave, when does when does the uh, how long has the governor extended the uh, no disconnect order? Uh, the last iteration of it. Do you know how long it's it's currently in effect for? Or no, do you have, uh, do you have to? The, uh, there's a PSC order that references the governor's order, okay. and the last order that they entered in that case was uh, was in April April 27. Okay. So they haven't. They haven't but that had no that had no end date when it would be reviewed on it or anything like that. That's correct. Okay. That's yeah, correct. I think it's that as long as there's a state of emergency is in effect. Yeah, I think the statute that the governor's acting under uh, that 39A. I don't think. It, when he issues orders, I don't think it has to have an expiration in it. So, yeah. um, next item is electric. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, as you turn to page 85, you'll see that the, starting with our SADI numbers for the month of May, our SADI number is 11.838. Uh, as you flip to page 86, this is our pie chart for the uh, percentages of the types of outages that we had for the month of May. And then on page 87, those percentages are broken down to actual number counts. And you'll see that we had a total of 26 outages for the month of May. And then on page 88 is our list of the top 10 outages for the month of May. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next is SEPA. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman of the board, your super reports are on page 87 through 89. You'll notice on 87 for the month of April, we made $64,075. That's the most we've made so far this year. That gives us a total for this calendar year of 191, $192,000 profit. You'll notice on page 88, the graph of last year, this year, in 2015, that we are doing significantly better this year than we have in the past. And then over on 89, page 89, of course, is the 24-year total. And uh, you can see how we're doing performing uh, compared to historical. So this year looks like, with the arrangement with KYMEA, it looks like it's working out pretty well this year so far. And you might just comment, Vinny, to you or David, going into the next fiscal year, how do you see that coming? Because I know this is part of the, the budget we're looking at. How do you see the SEPA revenue continuing into the next uh, budget year? We have essentially the same as around $716,000 contribution or reduction in wholesale power. Okay. And that's essentially what we've budgeted for 2021 is the same performance. As we're doing current year. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I think if you took this up before, you'd get to a little over 750000 760000 So, so far we're performing just slightly above where we're projecting. Anybody have any questions? SEPA? I just think it's yeah. great to see those positive numbers instead of the negative that we used to have. Like the black numbers rather than the red numbers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, next is uh, Kimi. Uh, Mr. Chairman for QMBA, I really don't have much a new report. We still have a regular board meeting as a planned. And uh, uh, also QMBA plan to have a new resource planning process start as late as this month. That may take uh, six, seven months the process. QMBA also plan to have a certain public engaged involvement. So there are meetings open to public. When they have the process, they also uh, openly seek a public input for the what, future process. What is the outcome or what's the intent of the planning process? Where where they want the, to get to? The planning process is their current contract, one of their contract, which is a more than one third of their resource contract end of the 2022. So the new process will be start to replace those resource have a better or lower cost uh, for the customer. I mm -hmm. think that's a basic plan. Okay. But they're going to run the very detailed model for the planning process and also it's a it's completely open process to general public. Okay. Any questions on? Okay. Uh, safety? Good evening. I only have one accident to report, and it was just a minor vehicle accident where a cable van was rear-ended at a intersection, and there were no OSHA recordables. This no, time. no injuries or. No, sir. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Water distribution. Mr. Smith. Good evening. How you doing, sir? Good. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, water distribution report can be found on pages 93 through 95. We had four main breaks and two outages. And then just to update the board, we begin construction on East Main again. The lower part of East Main from Broadway to High Street at this point, uh, depending on KYTC and their paving, if we can get that extended, we're going to go all the way to Ann Street. But we're waiting on KYTC because they previously agreed to do that, but with funds for transportation and the current budget, they're worried about whether they'll have money to do that. So we may stop just past High Street. So we can't proceed without their... Well, we, we could, but it's an additional $50,000 estimated uh, cost to the plant board to replace the water line, which we did not include in the original project because we thought it was going to be resurfaced by KYTC. Okay. So that's what we were kind of waiting on to see what they were going to do. Okay. Any ideas? No, go on, John. Sure. Any ideas? Alan, is there any idea when we're uh, when we'll find out uh, definitive word from the cabinet on how far they're going to go down? Chuck Knowles is is in contact. He I talked to him today. He's uh, kind of negotiating with the con with the cabinet to see if he can get them to extend that. Okay. So that's kind of where we're waiting on. Uh, right now, we've already redesigned our, our our plans just to go through just high street which mm -hmm. is where the milling limits mm -hmm. for the tiger grant do go they go <coughs> they do redo this end of the bridge the east main end of the bridge and so we're going to go mm -hmm. just beyond their their milling limits and tie back into the old main okay where's the where's the tiger grant at right now in terms of that whole process the planning of final design uh, they're still in they're still finishing up final design uh engineering's been i think got final plans or the nearest they're like 90 percent done with their plans on sewer and drainage because we've got some conflicts at certain place elevation conflicts that we're working through, but I think they're pretty much <clears throat> done. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for Al? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, water treatment. Oh, good evening, board. Mm -hmm. Good to see everyone after a couple of <laughs> months of not being here. Um, the water treatment plant report is on page 97 in your board packet. For May, we treated roughly 221.5 million gallons of water. That was 7.14 million gallons of water a day. Um, temperatures uh, for the month, I want to talk a little bit about temperature and rainfall. <clears throat> the temperatures were actually about 5 degrees below normal, both on the average temperature and on the, the high temperatures. 
So it was a cooler month. It was actually a very cooler month in terms of record cold highs. If anybody had trees, you remember the freeze we had. So we had some unusually cool weather. We also had a lot of rainfall. We had almost six and a half inches of rain in May. Uh, that was about one and a half inches over the, the normal average for the month. So our pumpage is very dependent upon weather. Is it hot and is it raining? So our numbers are down a little bit, but a lot of that has got to do with the rainfall and <clears throat> the cooler temperatures. The flows in the river stayed uh, well up uh, at 22,000 CFS. It was about 14.6 billion gallons of water a day. So we had plenty of water, uh, but it was all due to the rainfall. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And you've got your new screen installed, right? And we got the new screen mm -hmm. installed, yes, about, two, about a week ago. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. David, you're going to handle the uh, knock report? Yes, sir. Our network operations center is, uh, as well as like everyone else, up and running uh, through this whole last three months. This month of May, uh, they took in just under 2,500 calls and performed 655 locates. Uh, when we go out and locate, it's typically three utilities. So you can see for the first five months of the year, uh, almost 7,300 locates. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item, action items, uh, 5.1, consider approval of the workers' compensation insurance renewal. Ms. Phillips. Good evening again. We are asking that the board approve the renewal of our workers' compensation premium in insurance coverage with Kentucky Employers Mutual or Kimi for $94,776.19. This is a 4.8% reduction from last year's rate. Uh, the decrease is primarily due to a 9% decrease in our experience modification rating, which is an indication of our performance compared to other companies in the industry. So um, the rate is about $5,000 less than what we saw last year. Any questions? I mean, obviously the staff, everybody is doing an exceptional job in terms of safety and everything else. And didn't you say, I mean, by achieving that rating, I mean, that's almost not unheard of, but it's... Uh, our agent, Charlie Hamilton, has indicated that he's, I, I think he said that they, he's only seen one other rating that low in his career as an insurance agent. Yeah. I know that over my tenure, the... Our <coughs> rates used to be well over two hundred thousand dollars a year, so this is this quite a less than half. Yeah, yeah. Just just from what what they supplied us, 2011, 2012, we're paying one hundred forty thousand dollars. We're going to pay ninety four this year. It's good, mm -hmm. good work all yeah. around. Well, thank you. Hmm. Hey, there's I, no other questions. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the contract? So moved. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. I opposed. Uh, contracts approved. Thank you. Thank you. Next is item 5.2, contract award bid and invitation number 1698, annual price contract for water treatment chemicals. Julie? Yes, so staff prepared an annual bid for the water treatment chemicals used in the, at the plant. Uh, the bid includes estimated quantities and explains that orders could exceed or fall short of the estimates and vendors bid with the <coughs> understanding that the purpose of the bid is to hold the unit price through the FPV's fiscal year. We received 21 responses. After reviewing each bid, staff recommends awarding to the lowest bidders meeting specifications with the exception of powdered activated carbon, which was outlined in the specifications in the bid. So I'll read through these real quick. For liquid ferric chloride, we're awarding to PVS Technologies for $268 per ton with no change in price from fiscal year 20. Liquid sodium hydroxide to Brentag Mid-South at uh, 0.123 cents per pound, uh, a decrease of almost 12%. Polyaluminum chloride, again to US Alco at 0.1988 cents this was a slight increase of 1.46%. Uh, 
The powdered activated carbon is being awarded to Calgon Carbon at 82 cents a pound, and that's a 12% <coughs> increase. The hydrofluorosilicic acid, or the fluoride, is being awarded to Univar USA at, at 0 0.2197 cents per pound. Uh, that was a pretty significant price increase of 54% over the current year price. Anhydrous ammonia uh, to air gas at 0 0.9960 cents per pound. Uh, that was a decrease of 23%. Potassium permanganate to Brentag Mid-South at $1.00. 59.50 per pound, uh, just a slight uh, increase of 0.3%. Sulfuric acid to chemical resources at 0 0.1132 cents per pound, that was a pretty good decrease of 22.4%. Zinc orthophosphate <coughs> to Shannon Chemicals at 0 0.5460, again another decrease of 15.5%. Our bulk salt uh, for the on-site soda, uh, sodium hypochlorite or chlorine generation system was awarded to Morton Salt at $232.60 a ton at no change in that price. And our water softener salt uh, is going to chemical resources at 0 0.2080 cents per pound and again a little bit of a decrease of 1.2 percent. Uh, as of May 31st, 2020, our chemical purchases are totaling $524,759 with one month remaining in 2020. Uh, we have requested uh, $500,000 in the proposed uh, fiscal year 21 budget for treatment chemical purchases. What's going on with the, the Univar USA? Is there not a lot of competition in that market? or is uh, there... I, I was warned that the, the fluoride market was, was going up, and I'm, I'm really not sh sure what was causing it, but we were uh, expecting that increase. Okay. John? Uh, Julian, the one the one here where you didn't take the lowest bid, you you say you based it on the removal of taste or odor compounds. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you judge for that? Is that is that a is that a, uh, a is there a formula there? Is that how how do you how do you make that determination? We we ask that all of the carbon bidders send us a sample, okay. and we will set up a simulated plant process <clears> in the <throat> lab, and we dose raw water with a certain amount of geosmin and MIB. Okay. Then we add carbon, run it through the process, and pull some sample and send it to Louisville. And Louisville Water Company does all of our testing. And okay. what we're looking is which How one much gives can us the best. Out. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Okay. Steve, any questions? Don? Um, without any other discussion, do I have a motion to approve? Uh, I'd make a motion that we accept uh, the uh, I'll award the bid invitations, the annual price contracts for the water treatment chemicals as proposed by staff. Is there a second? I'll second. Any, any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Contracts approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Next one is consider award of bid invitation 1696, annual price contract for distribution transformers to Cape Electric uh -oh. Supply. Ms. Heller? Hello. Um, most of FPB's distribution transformers are purchased from an annual price contract. They are kept in inventory and used as needed for replacements. Um, orders for transformers depend on new development and replacement of bad transformers. And vendors bid with the understanding that they're locking in unit pricing for the year, not for a certain quantity of transformers. We do put estimates on the bid, but um, they're not guaranteed. Uh, the bid states that all transformers will be awarded collectively, all or none basis, and omitting pricing on any item will result in the rejected bid. This year we sent the bid to eight vendors. We received five responses. And after evaluating all bids, staff recommends awarding to Cape Electrical Supply. They were the lowest bidder. Um, as of May 2020, FPB has purchased approximately $161,233 off of the current contract, and the pricing on this bid is 4.7% decrease compared to last year. And the tab sheets, this really long tab sheet, we, put it, we have a lot of transformers. Uh, it's on page 115 through 125. Okay. Do we have any questions for Jennifer? Okay. 
If not, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? I'll second. Don seconds. Any discussion? If not, contract's approved. I think you got the next Thank one you. too, don't you? I'll, I'll be here for a little while. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one, item 5.4, consider award of bid, in, bid invitation 1697, annual price contract for ductile iron pipe to Hayes Pipe Supply and fittings to Core and Maine. Uh, the same with the transformers. Um, the uh, ductile iron pipe and fittings are purchased on an annual price contract. Uh, these are used to replenish inventory as they're used for projects. Um, it depends on new development and maintenance and repair of old material. Uh, they bid with the understanding they're locking in unit pricing, not a certain quantity, and each category is awarded on an all or none basis. Um, like last year, we started um, mostly with the Second Street Project, and with those grants, they require the Buy America and Buy American products. So we also include those on the bid, but the bid is uh, more heavily weighed on the other that we use more often. They do, we do um, use their pricing for that, but the award is heavily weighed on the regular. Um, th this invitation was sent to six vendors. We received four responses. Um, they recommended awarding the ductile iron pipe to Hayes Pipe, the fittings to Core and Main. Both of those were the low bidders in those categories. Uh, the pipe went up 15.73% and the fittings are down 11.28%. <clears throat> Any questions for Jennifer? Okay, if not, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, motion second uh, is uh, John and Steve. Uh, any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Contracts awarded. Item 5.5, .5, consider renewal of annual price contract for hydrants, <coughs> uh, hydrants, valves, and tapping sleeves to Ferguson Waterworks. Jennifer? Uh, the same as the others, and we use price contracts um, for to purchase all of these materials throughout the year. Um, the we bid this material last year, last August, and the contract was awarded to the lowest bidder of Ferguson. Um, at the time, the hydrants had um, increased a little bit, 3.57%. Valves had increased 5.21 and tapping sleeves increased 5.21. Uh, they offered a renewal of their current prices, no price increase for yeah. an additional year. Um, and it, we did have some uh, someone in our water department reached out to some other many you know people in the business, and there was indication that there probably would be increases. So we would like to ask to just renew that instead of rebidding it for this year. And so that would be with um, Ferguson Waterworks for no price increase. So so by renewing, we do, we're not subject to any escalators in there. It stays at the same year current right, price. Right, for, for the, yeah. And they were the willing to do year. that? Yes, mm -hmm. they were willing to offer the renewal. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, when we bid this out last August, uh, did we have a whole bunch of people bid on it? How many bidders do we have on it? Do we you had, um, I believe we had the four, the, the same four the for same the previous four that ones. normally bid on, the on pipe. those, yeah. Okay. And uh, Ferguson was the lowest on that. Okay. Were, they, were they significantly lower last time or was it close? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Okay. I can find out. Okay. I can get back to you with it. Okay. I mean, just. No, I don't. For, I just not going okay. to. Okay. I just. I didn't know if you had any other any, any other participants aside from those four. Just it was the same. Yeah, four. it's the same. Okay, no, I'm good, satisfied. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Steve moved. A second. Second. John seconded. All those in any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Contracts awarded. <coughs> Item five point six. Consider renewal of annual price contract for wood poles to T R Miller Mill Company. Jennifer. <coughs> Um, yeah, the wood poles are the same the same way we use the annual price contract. Um, the the uh, material, this um, bid was done in May of 2019. It was awarded to the lowest bidder of TR Miller Mill Company. Um, at that time, it was a price decrease of 10% from the previous year. <coughs> and they also offered a contract renewal with no increase for the year. Um, we did have to get some quotes for 
some other projects and those poles were higher than what we had on the price contract that we used. So just using that, we thought there would probably be an increase if we rebid it. So we would like to ask that we renew this one also. And we've spent, um, as of May, we spent 26,000 on the current contract. Mr. Chairman, just, just for my curiosity, uh, how many polls is that? How many polls we could go through in a year? Any idea how many of that are, They <coughs> range from 200 to, I'm trying to think what the highest is on the bigger poll. And we keep it, we keep so a we stock of several. these, we keep a stock of these in inventory yes. or, okay. Yeah, we order, we have the minimums mm -hmm. that we replenish okay. eat with each order. And I assume like if we had a major <coughs> storm or whatever, we can get more fairly quickly. Yes, they um, they have a really quick turnaround time, and it's stated on their bid. I didn't bring last year's bid, but they give us their lead time when they bid and fulfill it with that. That's probably something around 65 poles or something okay. in that range, depending right. on the size, if you get a transmission. <clears throat> right. How much are metal poles? I'm just, uh, and are they practical? I mean, I don't, uh, I don't know. Just yeah, we don't bid those. We just get quotes as needed on those. <coughs> um, That's standard. So we use for yeah, poles. yeah. Our, those are our transmission poles. We generally consider about seventy-five feet and higher. Those usually are a little cheaper for steel than they are wood because a wood pole, a straight wood pole of that size and that mm -hmm. diameter can be tough to get. Yeah. But which one lasts long? <coughs> Um, the steel pole will generally last longer as well. They're built to, a steel pole is generally going to be more consistent. Um, a wood pole, you <coughs> could have weak wood, you could have some, a lot of uh, inconsistencies with wood. But a steel pole of a certain class, H1 for instance, which is one of the transmission classes, that, that steel pole is built to the strength of, a, of an H1. <coughs> So even though you think steel, it must be considerably stronger, they're actually built to that standard. Another advantage you have with steel poles, for instance, if a car hits one, depending on how they hit it, but generally they'll, they'll crumple on the side, but stay <coughs> You can get to it and change it at your convenience, where with a wood pole, if a car hits the same thing, it'll snap it, and down it comes. You how about like in problem. storms? I assume the steel holds up better in storm, or does it? Well, you said it's the same strength, so. Same, generally the same strength. <coughs> You could get a weak batch of poles, or there could be a flaw in the wood, and, and that would be considerably weaker than the standard pole. So, um, when you get down to the distribution level, size poles, the steel poles are considerably more expensive. Right. So we generally do not do that for distribution, but we do for transmission with the steel. So, so based on longevity <coughs> versus ex at the initial cost, is is still, you know, a lot more expensive. Um, for the distribution class, uh, we feel the wood poles are still a better, a better deal. You also have to deal with steel poles when you get a distribution <coughs> are, are a lot harder to drill holes for, do your install on. You can't, if you're climbing the pole, you, you end up yeah. having to have steps in it because yeah. you can't get up. And the telecommunications then has to come along and try to drill the steel. <laughs> the bits are pretty expensive. So <laughs> We started going down that road probably 10 years ago before steel prices really declined. We started down that road of steel distribution poles, and then the prices just went up so much. Yeah. I just thought about it on and that storm we had, I guess, last summer, summer before last, on, <coughs> on 60 mm -hmm. for sale. How they replaced those wood poles with, with uh, uh, metal poles. That's what I asked the question. Yeah, I mean, you have to go back to the, the poles are kind of just like <coughs> the same string. If you want to go with a much, much stronger pole, the price will go up yeah. even more, but it would withstand some stronger storm situations. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion uh, to approve the contract? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? <coughs> no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Contract's approved. Next Thank is you. item 5.7. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, consider a coronavirus deadline extension amendment. Diane. Hello, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. In May.
May, the Department of Labor and the IRS issued regulations called extension of certain time frames for employee benefit plans, participants, and beneficiaries affected by the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, the regulations extend the deadline to enroll in COBRA, file claims and appeals, enroll in coverage due to a qualifying event by the length of the COVID-19 outbreak. We're asking the board to approve an amendment to our health plan to comply with the new regulations. Be happy to answer any questions. What's the practical effect of what this really actually does? Um, I think that, you know, there could be some um, people who delay filing a claim or delay um, having an appeal, but they would have been entitled to the same benefit um, either way. So I don't really see it as adding significantly, you know, to the plan. Mm -hmm. All right. and, in terms of any impact on our employees or anything, I mean, there's really no change. I, re I really don't think there'll, there'll be a change because I, I think, like I said, they're they're entitled to the benefit, but if for some reason, uh, you know, they delayed <coughs> a, filing a claim, you know, they would still be, in, you know, entitled to it later than they would have been. Okay. But it, it's still the same amount of, you know, the claim amount would still be the same whether they waited <coughs> or you know, if they didn't wait. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Diane? And this was a federal law that changed, right? Correct. Right. So, is it, is, am I understanding this right that whatever requirements that uh, an individual has to uh, comply with to keep el to be eligible within it's like certain tests that you have to take to get into one of the plans, uh, that this extends that type of time uh, uh, to get it done? I don't think it addresses specifically that well living component yeah. of our plan, but we have talked about um, <clears throat> possibly addressing that. The federal regulations, they mainly dealt with um, the time, you know, you have 180 days yeah. to file a claim or yeah. you have, I think, 60 days to enroll in COBRA. So it specifically addressed, you know, COBRA, filing claims, appealing, and if you had a qualifying event, if you had a um, son or daughter that aged out, they, they turned 26 mm -hmm. and they were no longer eligible and they didn't elect COBRA. Usually they have, you know, 30 days yeah. to elect COBRA. This would give them more time to elect COBRA coverage. Okay. So it doesn't, I don't think it addresses specifically that wellness um, part of our plan, but I'll, I can double check that. Well, I mean, I, it probably does. I, I was, the other question about it is, I'm glad that y'all consider that because I would think Mm -hmm. that because you haven't had access to go to a doctor's office or to a hospital that that could have delayed people from getting some of those required yeah or somebody was out of work and then had to pick up coverage and they got laid off for their job or whatever so, okay uh do i have a motion steve motion <laughs> second Sorry. dawn second any discussion all in favor say aye, aye. aye. opposed approved thanks diane Thank you. The next one, as I understand it, is consider accepting the minutes for the January 8th, 2020 Cable Advisory Committee. And as I understand it, all we need to do on this is just to accept the minutes. Is that correct? Yes, sir. The advisory committee has already approved these, in my understanding, and just this board to accept them. And, and any we've input? Already, we've already accepted. We've already approved the Fox News, the Fox extension mm -hmm. that's on here, right? Right. This is I mean, just. I make a motion. Second. Do I have a second? A second. Don, a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed? Minutes accepted. Next is item 5.9, consider approval of 42 year contract extension with Farmdale Water District. Mr. Billings. Yes, sir, how are you? Just fine, sir. Thank you. Farmdale contacted the plant board asking to renew the 42 year contract. Our existing contract was originally signed in 2011. It was also a 42 year contract. So this is just starting the time at zero. Uh, it's a win-win for us and Farmdale, so staff's recommenda recommendation is to extend the contract. Okay. So what, why, are we, why is it starting over? Tipic, tip, I'm not sure exactly what financing they go they were going after, but if it's a RD loan, an RD loan requires a 42-year okay. okay. contract, so I, I'm assuming 
it's for their financing. Okay, okay. Any other questions? Chair, I'd like to move we approve the 42 year contract extension with Farmville Water District. Okay, good. Don. Do I, who second? Don or? I'll second. Okay. Um, any discussion? <coughs> if not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It approved. Thank you. Good deal. Uh, next is review and approve the fiscal year 2021 budget and accept uh, the five-year plan. Um, let me just go over a couple things and then open it up for any discussion and, and see what the board's pleasure is. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt this was a, we had a, a process where we've, we've got our second draft in front of us. Uh, everybody's had a chance to look at it, review it, ask David questions for him to respond and get issues resolved you need resolved. Just a quick summary, and David, uh, correct me when I, if I say anything incorrect here. Uh, as I understand it, we'll be providing electric customers a $1.6 million rebate from the Kimi savings, which is approximately what happened last year. Uh, we'll be continuing the AMI project, continuing the fiber to the home, and about what percent will be completed, do we think, by the end of this new budget period? We'll have approximately 25% of our customer base covered by the end of the <coughs> fiscal year if everything goes as, as estimated. Okay. Uh, there's no rate increases built into this budget with the exception that if we have any pass-through programming, whether it be from Fox or ESPN or the networks, whoever that may be, other than that, there's no rate increases for our, from our side. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, let me just skip over one here and I'll come back to that. Uh, we reduced board expenses by approximately what percent? Uh, it's thirty-six thousand dollars. Okay. Proposed in legal and accounting, and also uh, okay. reduction in continuing education. And continuing the energy energy audits at the same level we spent this current year. Uh, we're going to continue the energy charging stations and have some money built in there for expansion, but all that's contingent on discussions with the city and evaluating uh, more statistical data later on, since we really have a pretty small database to look at at this point. Uh, continue the school projects in conjunction with FIS and Franklin County Schools, and apparently the superintendents have some interest, but that's based on continue to discuss with them, them coming forward with the project. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, uh, add additional staff to IT and telecom in the areas of security and some other areas that we need to beef up since that's been a, a, a lot of changes, a lot of growth area there. Uh, begin construction of new reservoir and the other item which I know is one that we've all uh, struggled with is normally we have a salary and compensation plan that we've that the previous boards have adopted and we've tried to follow and you know, I know we've looked at it and it's a difficult time in the community uh, in terms of other government agencies local employers uh, with the pandemic a lot of people have had some some tough times and Excuse I think me. we try to be sorry. If that's your last item, what did we, we is the uh, uh, policy analyst position still in here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Um, that we try to be sensitive to the fact that a lot of our ratepayers are in a difficult situation right now, um, and so, you know a lot of uncertainty and things are starting to come back. So. I think we've gone through all kinds of salary models and everybody's had a chance to look at them, study them and see what the impact would be. So what we're looking at right now uh, in front of us would be employees below the midpoint would get a 2% effective January 1st and that's been a long-standing board issue to try to get those employees up closer to the midpoint so there's not as much disparity between entry employees and longer term employees and at the across the board raise uh, for all employees would be effective January 1st rather than July 1st and it would be the higher of either what the Social Security COLA is or what the city adopts as their policy for increases but in no instance would that amount be more than 1.5 percent and that our regular ongoing policy in terms of promotions reclasses would stay the same that that would still be the same and I think uh, that's something that within the budget is in this model and I guess the question is, like I said, I know it's a tough issue for everyone, and I think everybody would like to do as much as we could for the employees, and I think uh, we also know that it's a sensitive time and tough time for school systems, city and county, uh, state government, and everybody else that they're struggling. Uh, so we've tried to take that in, uh, in consideration also. So at this point, 
I'd like to open it up for any other discussion, changes, modifications, more discussion, <coughs> alternatives, whatever anybody wants to do. Well, let, let me, I guess I can sure, go ahead, say, uh, <coughs> what, you, what you've read as it, as it relates to the pay increase, uh, up to a point for me was, was fine. I'd like to be <coughs> dependent on what, what if the city gets a pay raise, though. Mm -hmm. So changing on if the pay if the city gets their pay raise. So even if the like if the, and we don't know what the city yet, and I think their meetings later this month, so we don't know yet what right. the city's going to do. The way it's written now is the we would go with the higher of either what, if the city does something or what the Social Security COLA is, which is people retired get that on January first. Right. But based on your uh, this uh, what you're talking about is if the city does nothing, we wouldn't do the Social Security COLA either yeah. for yeah. across the board. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I disagree. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a problem with what is being proposed for businesses. <clears throat> We're fiscally sound. We have no fiscal reason for not complying with our compensation plan. And I'm, you know, I understand the votes aren't there, so it really doesn't matter what I say. <laughs> from what everybody has indicated here, but I, I just feel very strongly that we at least need to give the 2% in <coughs> January and the the COLA of possibly one and a half, you know, no higher than one and a half percent. That That is a bare, bare minimum to me. What we're saving in, in switching from January versus July is a minuscule amount of our total budget. And, you know, we're talking about the community. Well, we have employees too that are uh, struggling. And I, I just don't think there's a, a real fiscal reason for not giving a 2% raise in, in July. That's just my opinion. Um. I think, you know, at this point, I mean, we don't have any idea what the city's going to do in terms of either percent or <coughs> effective date. Um, everything we're looking at right now is we're talking about what is in front of us right now is the hire of either the Social Security <coughs> COLA or the city salary increase. Everything we're looking at now is, is unless based on what energy prices are, food prices are up some, but everything else, housing and that. What David, I mean, I think everything we're looking at is it's likely a Social Security COLA <coughs> probably be lucky to reach one percent in it yeah and i think it was 1.6 last year last time they do it they do it for the third quarter of each calendar year effective january 1st is my understanding yeah so uh yes you're right energy uh, i should say <coughs> food prices have been up but mm -hmm. um i think the social security cola they use the uh wage earners cpi versus what the urban mm -hmm. wage uh, mm -hmm. cpi but so you're right it, yeah. inflation is not a factor for for a while yeah and i think one of the reasons that the january date is out there is to give a chance for the economy to come back some for a lot of residents in the, the community to get back to work and kind of get back on their feet. Um, uh, I tend um, to, to go along with what Dawn's talking about, which basically gives us the classic stalemate at two to two. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> so basically it sounds like, if I'm understanding everybody, we're pretty much in agreement on everything else, but we've got the salary issue that's still we still got there. Yeah. So let me ask this. Is there a, we've got alternative A, and we could take a vote on alternative B, but I think we end up two to two. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, does anybody have an alternative C? <laughs> 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 or we, or we could do like we used to do years ago, everybody could just go out and start walking around the building <laughs> until somebody gives in. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, I, I haven't said anything yet on this, and I, I you know, I've talked to you briefly and, and, uh, and uh, thought about this a lot mm -hmm. um i just think we've got a lot of unknowns out there i know mm -hmm. we're in good we're in good financial mm -hmm. shape there's there's no getting around it we're you know we, we've managed to cut cost we're, we're cutting cost in this thing mm -hmm. boards cutting mm -hmm. cost we're doing a lot of stuff to try to do that but you know in terms of you know one of the reasons we're in as good a shape as we are is because of the money we get from our rate payers mm -hmm. and i go back from the rate payers and i said this is a discussion you know you know we we're not raising rates here, but if we've got the extra money, 
do we want to talk about cutting rates? We mm. haven't decided to do that because we don't know what the future holds, right. and I think it's proper that we're not doing that. I think it's also proper that we take a step back. We still hit the hit the folks that are below the midpoint, get them the two percent in January. Mm. If we get an across the board, they would get an across the board too. Am I correct in that? No, they they would not. So right. that would be for the ones above the midpoint. Above the midpoint, we get would nothing. be the, would uh, would be would be the. Uh, so, so under under what you said, the two percent would be to those below midpoint, right. and then the 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 uh, the cola would be for folks above the midpoint. Well, no, the cola actually would be for everybody. Would be for everybody. Above the if we get everybody it, across if the we board, get it, right. right? Yes. So those folks would get if 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 the city comes, and I and I also think it's important that in this case we tie what we do to what the city does. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are for for better or worse, we are a product of the city, mm -hmm. and I, I I think we need to recognize kind of who we are. I feel like in the future we can get back to where we were with the two and two. I feel like some, I just feel like there's so much uncertainty mm -hmm. out there uh, for a lot of our ratepayers that I just feel like this is a, a middle ground that is not perfect, but I think it gets us part of the way. And, you know, that, that's just my feelings on the matter. Mm -hmm. So, John, is what you're saying that you would agree <clears throat> to the the 2% in, in January? Yes. For uh, below midpoint, yes. and then whatever the city gives for the cola. Yes, if the city gives a cola, yes, I'm I'm willing to do that. Yes. Okay, I can I, I, I don't love it, <clears throat> but I can vote for it. So whatever percent the city gets, uh, we would award the same amount. Not notwithstanding what date they award, we would award ours January first, or yes. the same date they award January first. January first. January first. So yeah. we would go with third percent. That was your that was your proposal, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Steve, I'll go with that. You can. So, oh, another thing I want to point—I know you wanted to point out, David—was I think one of the important things in the position that uh, you all are, are at work with the board and got us in is on the AMI and the fiber to the home. We're financing. Rather than going out and borrow money, we're financing that internally, which is saving the ratepayers a lot of money on, on interest cost. It is. I mean, we're not just focused on the day-to-day. -day. This this five year, this is a budget and a five-year plan, asking mm -hmm. for a one-year approval of a budget. Mm -hmm. But you have staff, uh, along with you all, boards, yes. working. This Every number in here represents a plan for five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we've got all of our capital planning for secession planning with important departments. Um, this is a long-range deal to keep infrastructure delivering the services that our customers owners deserve and want uh, and also keeping a very strong financial position for all the right reasons mr chairman yes. you mentioned you mentioned uh f uh fiber to home and, yes. and ami but also we're, we're financing the, the, the reservoir the reservoir yes too. internally too yeah so let me ask a question on that so in this in this <clears> current <throat> budget what the amount that the, that uh telecom was paying that budget has been reduced by that amount and and electric has been and water has been increased by that amount correct we had two line items in the original uh, budget we covered on june 5th that had a line item for the dish relocation and mm -hmm. a new item for the new new tower okay. both of those have been moved to water uh, and water will be funding those uh, the rest of that money was distributed back into infrastructure investment for telecom Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I want to also address sure. this, this uh, policy position that, that's included. Mm -hmm. What was one of the things I wanted, and and I, I just think the, the position needs to be report to the director, mm -hmm. and I just think it, it, it's a start, and I just think this is a start to address uh, building some kind of unit or division that is more analytical, uh, and has more. Uh, a more econometric bend to it that can start looking at things like KYMEA and the actions and potential actions that KYMEA may take. They can start doing a, a pre-analysis, if you will, and projections on those things. And it also can address the telecom issue with fiber and, and any other issue that requires some kind of uh, short and long-term uh, range planning. Uh, I think that part is critical to the plan board now as we move past KU to KYMEA that we're in a new world now that we need some uh, economic analysis, uh, a more robust unit to do that type of thing. And I hope this uh, policy analysis position will be a start that we can build on for the next year with uh, 
other other positions there. And I guess the other thing we all mentioned is based on what you brought up last time, Steve. I know Diane's been assembling the data and so forth on the affirmative action. And as soon as we get some more of that data, we'll be coming forward. I think Gary with some steps that we can take to uh, to make some changes there to improve recruitment and so forth. Yeah, yeah I, I would like that to be on a, a, a future meeting agenda, sure. whether it's next month or the month yeah. after or whatever. Mr. Chairman, if, yes. if you don't mind, I would like to add a little bit of uh, focus on what David said. Uh, in this current budget, actually, the proposed not only 1.6 million to the customer, uh, which is a really cut a rate at roughly 2.5%. Um, that's a direct benefit to customer. There are other part, I, like you mentioned, in next two years from the water reservoir project or AMI to the fiber to home, next two years we could look for 16 million or more pass investment to our infrastructure. It's all come from cash. So this is a long term, um, <coughs> is really decrease rate, much less liability to the company. So I, I think uh, I really appreciate yeah. what you try to do. Yeah. Not only say customer have a good deal today, long term they can have a better deal. Uh, meanwhile, I also uh, appreciate you consider uh, increase for the employee because they've done very good yes, job. Yes, they have. This, uh, they've done an exceptional job during all this. Yes, yes. they have. Uh, uh, I, I will say this before I apologize, yes, no. that, you know, if, if we're projecting the, the KYMA savings to be every year, I, I, I'm ready to, to, to look at reducing permanently the electrical rates of the rate payers about that amount because, you know, if it's going to be the savings, if that's going to be a, a, a small portion of the savings, or a, a quarter or a tenth of the, of the savings each year, why not make it a permanent reduction to, to rate payers electrical bills? I would feel a lot better about the other things we do uh, if we started, as we get these savings, passing along to the rate payer. Let me ask I this, mean, Gary, either maybe you or Vin could address it. Is it time to address that? I mean, we've adopted the 1.6 million in this budget. Yes. But is it time to address what Steve's talking about the next time around? Or is it after they finish and we see what their power planning process is going to be and what those rates will be because that will set the tone for the future yes. energy contracts and and like yes. I mean just for discussion for KVME contract the 100 megawatt they have is only a three-year contract end of 2022 they do have a new solar project coming online on the 2022 but still they're going to short that 100 uh, so the planning process they're going to have right now going to hope we're going to secure new resource. Certainly we hope it's a lower cost option for us. <coughs> and also it's not short term. I hope it's a little longer term solution. In that perspective, we can have a moderate, much better forecast predicting the future. And also because our current capital project, <coughs> instead of to borrow 16 million or more money for the, our rate payer to pay in the future, which is automatically in the rate. In this way, we use the cash saving, not only spend it on our operation costs, we really spend on the capital, which when is absolutely will we, needed. When will we know the outcome of that planning process? The, the planning process will probably end up in the six months so, and uh, uh, after that, they're gonna have um, RP process. So the total, I assume, a nine months or a year process. So we so would probably know it, have a pretty good feel by the time this next this budget rolls around next time. Exactly, and also uh, our retail read study need to be done before the board formally decide what a rate you want to decrease, because <coughs> we really need a something like a long term, not only looking for KYME cost, looking for the overall company. So the, then we can do more stable rate instead of a looking cut down rate and then a few years we'll have to hike back. Uh, that's probably worse than looking for a more stable long-term rate. When's our rate study scheduled or is that budgeted? Not, not yet right now, but uh, uh, I think uh, probably just like you suggest and the mission suggests, 
looking for the KYME study, their done, their future resource planning done, then we know what we can count on, and then we can have some kind of budget number we can, most likely we have hard outside expertise to do the study. That will be the transparent, everybody can look into it, and then that can burn back to the board. Then you can make a decision based on that. That's kind of timeline. Mm -hmm. um, you know, probably next year budget most likely, right? We're looking for putting something in. And next and year's budget, I would think so. By the time you get the RP done yep. and you get those results and then to go out and do a cost of service study, yep. you have to have those results, I, I think, to do a good cost of service study. Yes. You're probably that would run into next year, next calendar year. I think we would be asking for the cost of service study, not this this budget year, but next budget year. So well, you know, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, I, I may not be the clearest person in here, <coughs> but uh, I just think whenever we start, as we see these savings, our mindset needs to be about how we pass along. Just as we pass along in the calls on telecom, mm -hmm. the things to the to the ratepayer, we need to be able to pass along a little bit of the savings we get to the ratepayer. And I don't know if we, I, I, I don't see that mindset, and that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, at the July meeting, um, maybe you can make a presentation, Gary, or Vint, a little more laying out, a, a little more, not, I know we can't lock it in because we're dependent on Kimi, but to lock it in a little more, or if not July, certainly by August, a little more on timeline and kind of laying out what the timelines would be based on what we think Kimi's going to be doing their timeline and the time to get an RFP on the street, get somebody to do the rate study and what that looks like. Just so we kind of have a little calendar in front of us so we can kind of get a feel for that. So it doesn't kind of fall off the table on us. But the other thing is, and I guess it's appropriate under compensation because I know we're a special meeting hands and we can't add anything, but I think uh, for your contract, uh, I think in the past we've awarded you the same as what the employees got. Is that, I, I mean, that's usually, had that been the practice before? <laughs> we, I think last year uh, they did have a, a We didn't have the formal evaluation process. Form 11. Right. Uh, forum, you know, uh, I think uh, those will be ready. We can send to you, except you want to change it. Mm -hmm. And then you can, based on that, so I guess what we'll do there is the input of what I need to improve. Uh, if we could accept, if we could, uh, who's got the evaluation forms? Do you, if uh, we could send those out to all the board members, and you all send them back to me and I can tabulate I, them? I, I will ask each our So who okay. we've asked? Uh, it's the one that's been used, I know, the last several times okay. on the meeting goals and so forth. Well, first I guess we ought to do is send the, the current form out. Yes. That's been used, I guess, the last several years. Let everybody look at it, see if there's any changes. Mm -hmm. And it will make any changes, and then at that point, everybody complete it. Yeah. I can tabulate them, and then we can go from there. Does that make sense? Yes. So I guess uh, if you get HR to send send it in draft, Gary, to Steve, John, uh, myself, and Don, let us look at it, see if there's any changes we want to make in it, uh, modifications, add anything, delete anything. Maybe everybody take a couple weeks to look at it, tell me what you want to do, and then we'll revise it, then send it out to everybody for score. Is that... Does that work for everybody? So what we've got right now is on the budget, as, as the items I read off based on our last work session and the items I read off, with the exception that for uh, employees below the midpoint, they would be a 2% as in our current compensation, but only one bump on January 1st, and that for all employees, they would see receive the same raise in January is what city employees are awarded in the city budget. Is that where we're at? Yeah, I think all I would want to add is that at any point we can revisit it mm -hmm. if things are not as bad as what they mm -hmm. may be. Yeah. And so we could make adjustments possibly at a later date. Okay. Okay. Um, any other discussion on the budget? Any other changes, modifications? No? If not, uh, do I have a motion? Move. John's made a motion. Do I have a second? Let me second. This would be the first budget I approved. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Do we, do we have any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed?
budget's adopted. Uh, next is informational comments. Uh, Gary? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I really don't have any additional except you would uh, like to ask me. I can ready to answer any question you would like to mm -hmm. ask. And I just want to comment, I think I can speak for the board, um, compliment you and your staff and the whole, all the employees and all the management team on the way you all have managed this whole thing during this pandemic, continuing service, the customers have been served and it's been seamless and you deserve a lot of credit and your team deserves a lot of credit for what you all have done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, like David mentioned, we're our team already back to normal operations mm -hmm. since June 1st, all the line crew is already back to normal. Um, and uh, since uh, yesterday, Monday, we are lobby, uh, we would say, uh, subject to <coughs> open to the customer. They, they do not, can, cannot directly walk in, but there is a process if uh, they would like to come to see us, our lobby are kind of open to the general public. But thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes. Uh, number seven, I think you've got some excitement for us in July, <laughs> Ms. Uh, Hale. Yeah, as most of you know, I've been working on a board governance policy for about two years now, maybe. Uh, and I, I'm not sure, John Snyder, if you've received a copy, a draft copy of the board governance policy. Uh, I think I have. Okay. I, I have some notes on it. I have done get back with you on it. I've got the notes on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I talked with Hans. We're going to get together sometime before the next board meeting uh, to work on the board governance policy and the ethics policy and financial disclosure form. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get copies, make whatever changes you want, and then we can discuss it. Yeah. If you could, Hans, maybe we could set as a target, Don, you and Hans, get everything to everybody at least maybe two weeks before the next meeting. To have it in draft to have a sure. chance to look at it and everybody review ask any questions and then everybody's prepared to discuss it next time Don, I've got I've got comments on the original what you sent out earlier. I will I will get those to you by the weekend. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And you know if you just Google utility board governance <coughs> policies, there are a ton of board governance mm -hmm. policies on on the internet to just compare and look at. They all are, have the same basic components. <coughs> and you know what I've sent out is not I just cut and paste <laughs> from mm -hmm. other people. So. Hopefully we can look at that because I do think it's important that we have a written board governance policy and our ethics policy and financial disclosure reform should be maybe tightened up a little bit too. So I appreciate y'all considering that. Okay. Uh, next item, 8.1. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, ask for a motion to go into closed session pursuant to KRS 61-8101B for deliberating deliberations regarding the sale of real property. The reason for privacy is because publicity at the deliberation stage might be likely to affect the value of the property. Do you have a motion? Moved. Second. Got a second from Steve. Any discussion? All those in favor of going into closed session? Say aye. 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 Opposed? We're going into closed session. Jordan, we hate to always do this to you, but <laughs> you, 